Hey guys, Chris from Adapt Tuition here, and in this video, I'm going to show you the solution for question 6 from the Jan 2008 PUA paper 2. If you want to see the solutions to the other questions on this paper, I'm going to put a card up there and a link in the description below. So be sure to check those out as well. And with that said, let's get into the question. Okay, so we have a partnerships question, and it tells us that on August 1st, 2007, Karen and Jack decided to merge their business ventures into a partnership called K&J's Baked Goods. Each partner brought the following assets and liabilities into the partnership. Okay, so we have a table down here showing Jack and Karen's assets and liabilities. Jack on the left-hand side, Karen on the right-hand side. Now, part A to the question asks us to prepare the opening entry to record the new partnership of K&J's Baked Goods as at August 1st, 07, show all workings, 8 marks. Okay, cool. Okay, so it says to show the opening entry. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a separate entry for Jack and a separate entry for Karen so we can see each of their capital balances or capital calculations, well, separately. And then I'm going to show you the single <coughs> set of journal entries that could have been done. Um, I found it easy to do these things separately and then put them back together. But of course, in the exam, you're not going to have the luxury of time to do both sets. You have to pick one and go with it. But for the sake of illustration, I'm going to do both of them, right? Okay, so let's focus on Jack for a second. So Jack has bank overdraft creditors, both of which are liabilities, and then the rest of the items are assets, cash, stock, van, debtors. Now, of course, with your general journal, don't forget your debit entries come first, Credit entries come second, and you'll, of course, indent the credit entries relative to the debit entries. So the debit entries or debit items or assets, in this case, are going to be entered first. So we're just going to put them. So cash is 600, stock is 1550, van is 35,000, and debtors is 7,000. Okay, cool. And then the liabilities are going to be entered next. And, of course, liabilities have credit balances, so they'll be entered here. Bank overdraft 1000, credit is 750. Now, to get capital, we apply our trust dual formula, assets minus liabilities. That's going to give us a capital for Jack of 42,400. And if you want, you could put like a little subtotal showing that the sum of the debit items is equal to the sum of the credit items. Okay, well, it was supposed to be equal to it. <laughs> One second. Right, okay, so we're good to go. 44, 150, 44. So you see why it was good to have a cross check to know to make sure that the things were equal. Okay, let's talk about Karen now. So for Karen, right, we had bank and industrial ovens. We had debtors and bank loans. So bank loan is a liability. Uh, stock, creditors, bacon trade. So creditors is also a liability. So again, let's just go in order of appearances. So we're going to put the bank and the industrial ovens followed by the debtors and the stock and then the baking trees, right? Because this journal entries, there's no order of permanence or liquidity. You could put it in those, either of those if you want. I just put it in order of appearance. Then we have the bank loan and the creditors, right? And of course, to find the capital for Karen, you add up all the assets, add up all the liabilities, and find the difference, which is 32,004. And again, you could have a total for each column here. Let's just make sure it's the same this time, 39,950, 39,950, okay, good. All right, now what I'm gonna show you is the combined journal entry, which is basically what I think the question actually asked for. So in no particular order, right, the assets. So we had cash from Jack, we had stock. Now we had two sets of stock, so you don't have to put two separate line items for stock. Just add the two stock items together. The van was 35 debtors. Now you had debtors for both um, Karen and Jack, so you add the two items together to get one single line item. Bank, industrial ovens, baking trays, right. Now we had bank overdraft, creditors. Now you could actually net off the bank and the bank overdraft. That might actually have been the better thing to do. I'm now only just now noticing it. So basically a bank would have been a net of 86.50. All right, so maybe we could do that. Maybe we could do 86.50 here. And what we'll do is we put out it was 96.50, sorry, 96.50 minus the 1,000. All right, and we will uh, just clear off the overdraft here. Let's see if it holds. <laughs> I hope I didn't mess up anything too much there. Right, so we also had a bank loan, right, and the capital from Jack, 42.4, capital from Karen, and of course the totals, right, so the totals still match to each other. And yeah, so we actually saved on a little one line item there. Right, okay, so I, like I said, I think this is what they wanted it to have as opposed to two separate ones. But with two separate ones, two separate sets of entries for each partner, you would have been able to calculate their capital more easily. 
right? But I leave it up to you as to what you wanted to do. Okay, that was part A. Part B is asking for an appropriation account. Let's take a look at that. Okay, so the question goes on to say that Karen and Jack have agreed that the remaining profit will be shared equally after recording the following. So we have interest on capital, 10% per year. Salary, Karen will earn 10,000 per year. At the end of the first day of operation, K&J's baked goods recorded a net profit of 30,000. Drawings were as follows, Karen 8,000, Jack 6,000. First thing they want us to show here, for five marks is the appropriation account for the year ended. The period ended July 31st, 2007. Right, so I think they made a mistake. Because this says July 31st, 2007. If you go back to the top of the question, on August 1st, 2007, they decided to merge. So on July 31st, they didn't decide to merge. So you would have, unless it was a trick question, they had no appropriation account to do, which I don't think it was. So really and truly, I think that this item here, the date was supposed to be July 31st, 2008. Okay, so I'm going to pull up that appropriation account and we're going to head up properly. KNJ's baked goods. Profit and loss appropriation account or just appropriation account for the year ended 31st July 2008. Now, we're going to start with the net profit. So they gave us a net profit of 30,000. So you can put net profit or net profit before appropriation. And of course, now less appropriation. So for those of you who know appropriation accounts, normally we'd add interest on drawings before we appropriate. But we didn't have an interest rate for drawings. So therefore, we're not going to charge any interest on drawings. We're going to go straight to the interest on capital. Right, so the question did tell us that it was 10% per year. And if you remember from the previous general entries, we had 32,004 for Karen for capital and 42,004 for Jack for capital. 10% um, of which is 32,004 and 42,004 respectively. We're going to subtotal that. And they told us that Karen earned $10,000 as a salary, a partnership salary per year. Partner salaries are not expenses, they are appropriations. Now, Totaling is 7480 and the 10,000 will give us 17480, which is then subtracted from the 30,000 above to give us a profit after appropriation of 12,520, which we now have to share between the partners. And according to the information in the question, the remaining profit will be shared equally. So all we have to do is divide 12,520 by 2 and give each half to Karen and Jack, respectively. And of course, when you share it up, there's nothing left in the appropriation account. Lovely. So that's that item. Let's take a look at the part two to this part B. Okay, so they asked us to calculate the return on capital employed for each partner. Okay, so most of us might know return on capital employed from ratios, which is net profit divided by capital, or in some cases divided by average capital. Now, in this case, the net profit was appropriated between the partners. So what we need to do is we need to add up each partner's individual appropriations to get the total earnings and then divide that by their capital contributions. So I'm going to pull it up here. So I have a column for Karen, a column for Jack. So the earnings. So remember, we said it was the interest on capital, 3240 and 4240 respectively. Karen was the only one with a salary of 10,000. And we just saw the share of profit was 6260. We're going to add up the earnings for the partners and then divide by their capitals, 324 for Karen, 424 for Jack. When we divide and express as a percentage, we get 60.19 for Karen and 24.76 for Jack. Okay, and there's just one more part of this question. Let's take a quick look. Okay, so part C, the last part for two marks, outline two advantages of the partnerships type of business over a sole trader. Okay, so I pulled up a few here. You know me, I don't just like to give you two, right? So advantages, so more partners. So when you have a partnership as opposed to a sole trader, a sole trader has one and only one owner. A partnership has multiple owners, between two and sometimes 20 is the convention, right? But there can be more. When you have more partners, the first thing is that you're probably going to get more capital at the start. More partners equals more money, usually. Next, the partners probably have more knowledge, experience, and skills and connections than just one person. Unless that person is some kind of super person, I don't know, right? And of course, when you have more people, it could facilitate division of labor and can possibly increase productivity. Right. Of course, if you have any other advantages of a partnership over what you call it, a sole trader, you can always put them in the comment section below and we can learn from each other and grow together. But that's about it for this question. OK, guys, so there you have it. That's the solution for question six from the Jan 2008 PUA paper two. If you have any questions about it, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below and I'll get back to you when I have a chance. If you want to check out any more videos, I'm going to put some cards up here. 
Don't forget to subscribe and be sure to check out my website where you'll find some pretty interesting PUA handles. Anyway, guys, as per usual, thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you next time. Bye.